Welcome back. You're listening to a special edition of Ask the CIO, sponsored by Looking Glass on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Aaron Joe, the Director of the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center in the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Aaron, you went through all the, all the different ransomware, all the different attacks that we're seeing, all the, all the concerns, all the trends. Uh, it, it kind of makes me want to get off my computer here and move on to back to paper, but uh, we know that's not going to happen. So the key here is then is sharing this information, understanding, making sure that both executives at the IT executives and non-IT executives understand why cyber security is so important. And especially, you know, and, and we take a step back as it relates to the national cyber strategy. So walk me through a little bit about how CTIC is ensuring that this threat intelligence is, is, is definitely driving better decisions. Well, I'm so glad you asked, and this is an exciting time for me to be in government. CTIC has had the opportunity to contribute to the formulation and the continued formulation of implementation of the U.S. National Cyber Strategy. There are four pillars in that strategy. One, protect the American people. Two, promote American prosperity. Three, preserve peace through strength. Four, advance the American influence. And that means building coalitions around the world to work together to keep our shared cyberspace safe. So CTIC's role to support the work being done in the national cyber strategy is in several parts. First, as you talk about the intel sharing, the integrated intel picture that we provide on a regular basis, we do two things there. We provide clarity and context. The clarity not all decision makers in government come with a cyber background or know much of the technical aspects of the threats that we're facing today. So our biggest contribution in facilitating decision making is to report these threats in plain English in a way that decision makers can quickly understand and then take action on. We do that in a number of ways. One, we do bring all of those experts in, like I talked about from around various parts of government, who know and understand the language that their principals or their decision makers back in their agencies will understand. And two, we do have a technical expert whose expertise we can rely upon to help us understand the nature of the problem and then put it into a description that will make sense and be accurate. Context, that's the other bread and butter of CTIC, we provide context. So we look at the history of the threat actors, the intentions and capabilities. We look at the geopolitical context. Earlier, like I talked about, there have been threats in other countries that we have seen, even in open source, that we were able to learn more about so that we can pass that information to different elements in government to take precautionary measures. So we are looking at the, at the world and we're looking for anything that might gives a, give us context to help us anticipate problems, issues, or concerns and warn ahead of time, as well as understand it better while something is happening so we can provide that context. Because we do that, we provide that information at all levels across the government and our, and our readership. I mentioned earlier about our products going to briefers, but our products also go to line analysts and anyone who has access to that intelligence in the community who can use it for their own decision makers as they see fit. A few other roles and responsibilities that CTIC has under are, are to support the national cyber strategy. One is to develop a framework of courses of action that the US government can use and put together quickly so we can increase responsiveness. We do this with other departments and agencies. We, we don't do this alone, but we have been very active in this space. And by providing a framework of the types of things that we want government to think about and have ready so that when something happens, we know the capabilities or we know the types of expertise we have in government that we can bring to bear against a threat very quickly. And then the third way that we're supporting the national cyber strategy from CTIC is that we have a role to help look at our progress against our objectives pursuant to the strategy. So this is really interesting because each individual agency in government 
tends to look at their own effectiveness, or maybe they look at their own measures of performance or measures of effectiveness within their own agency against their own objectives. But this is a look across government to say, how are we doing all together against the goals that we set for ourselves against the national strategy? So we had to build a capability. We used a lot of the expertise that already existed in government, and we brought that capability into CTIC. And now we're looking on the front end to say, what are the right things that we should be looking at to determine if we have made progress later as we look back on our actions? So all of these things will improve current and future decision making. I love the clarity and the context piece because I think those two things are key for when we talk about even non-IT people, but but most of all for IT people. Is is that a hard for your staff for your your as you guys are writing these briefs or writing what happened and, and pulling from classified and unclassified and open source data and to, to put it in a way that this is why it matters. Like, do you have like a section that, that says, if you read nothing else of this entire report, here's the one or two sentences why you need to care. Do you, do you guys simplify it? Uh, maybe that's not the right word, but that, that much? We do. And we have several ways we do that. We have several product lines, but in our daily product, we have a section right in the front, a story. And we write it like a story so that people can understand, hey, these are the things we're seeing that we believe might piece together in a, in a way of interest so that you don't have to go research it all yourself. You don't have to go look it up yourself. We'll put those few things together in very simple terms and deliver that to you so that you can understand it very quickly. And we've had significant feedback from leaders across all of government who note how easy it was to learn something and be alerted to something just by putting it in simple English in the front, on the front page news, if you will. <laughs> yeah, so important. People lose sight of that sometimes. Uh, Aaron, we're just about out of time. This has been a great conversation and we could talk so much longer, but just real quick, uh, you, you guys are doing maybe some special work or, or some, some taking a special effort around information sharing both from across the sector, federal, state, local, commercial. Quickly tell, tell us how you're doing that. So we've had several efforts along those lines. And one of the things that I'll just put out there uh, that may be of interest is when it comes to all those components you just mentioned, we're actually a consumer, we're a customer too. So as all those out there produce intelligence, know that we are looking at those sources of information and intelligence and integrating it as well. But the second thing that we did that's really exciting for us is ODNI is an integrator and we have the ability to bring the community together in very important ways. You know, everybody knows the value of networking. And that's no different in this, in this world. But oftentimes in government, it's very hard for the practitioners who live in the world of, of the analysis every day to be connected to others across government. So one of the things that CTIC did is we co-hosted one of the first um, forums that's ever been done where we brought net defenders and cyber threat intelligence experts and those who make decisions, the decision makers in government all together for multiple days. And those did include days that included private sector. So from both perspectives, the cyber threat perspective on in the intelligence side, as well as on the net defense side. And the response was overwhelming. We had hundreds of people show up day after day after day. We had hundreds more dial in virtually to participate in this event, the first of its kind that I'm aware of in, in government. And day after day, we had subject matter experts talking about what they're seeing. And the other part that I'm so proud of is we challenged our assumptions in government. And sometimes we love to talk about what we know, or, and we love to talk about the way we know it and the way we've known it for a long time. But in cyber, I think it's so important to remember it changes and to challenge our assumptions is really healthy and important. After challenging those assumptions, we might come up with the same conclusion, but at least we know we've examined it carefully. Aaron, that's a fascinating. We'd love to talk to you more about it, but unfortunately we're out of time for today. So we will have you back on the show again and there's plenty to talk to. 
So first, let me thank my guest. Aaron Joe is the director of the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center in the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by Looking Glass on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Ask the CIO.